The Sayusla River was second only to the Columbia in the amount of fish. Literally, you could walk across the backs of the salmon. It was just completely full. And those resources weren't untapped. That was just a well-managed land. It got down in 1995 to less than 4,000. Without us managing these things like salmon and the habitat of salmon, we're gonna lose part of ourself and our history here also. Every salmon steelhead season, I go out with my dad and my son and my daughter, and it's just part of our lives. When they're in, alive underwater, you can like watch them change from red to green. It looks awesome. What makes the Sayusla able to be restored is not just the landscape and not just its ability to be what it once was. I also think it's related to the people that live here and their desire to actually change this and make this what it once was because they have a strong connection to this place. I do see that the specific actions that are taken make a big difference. If people are able to work together, pool their ideas, pool their resources, projects are more effective, they're more meaningful. So we're trying to restore all the processes in order for the watershed to be a healthy system and keep it usable for not just fish and other animals, but for us as well. The co play a part in feeding the people and feeding the land. We need to take care of the Sayusla where a lot of salmon are able to thrive. Being from a logging background, the stream restoration work provide a lot of industry for people. That's why I think it's key to invest in these type of projects. It's going to be landowners. It's going to be the tribe. It's going to be the kids that grew up here that are gonna be the ones who can make a change here. We all are like a big family out here. We're putting in the effort to make it a, a home for many species instead of just a few.